All right, so let's talk about chemical equations. Um, all right, so in a chemical reaction, how do you know when, if a process takes place, how do you know if it's a chemical reaction or not? Well, the main thing, one of the main ideas, if, 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 it, if it happened or it didn't, is you can't get back to your original uh, state. Uh, that's a pretty good question you can continue to ask yourself. Like, if something happens, can I get back to where I was originally to see if it was actually a uh, chemical reaction? There are four main indicators that a chemical reaction actually took place. Bubbling um, is one of them. So when you have, when you put two things together and bubbling starts to occur, that's a gas being formed. So in this bubbles is actually a gas. So when you have bubbling, you actually form ga new gas particles. Another thing is color change. If you think about, let's say, um, in the fall, the leaves change color, uh, that's an actual chemical reaction that takes place. So something uh, that cha changes color, you put two things together and, and it turns from like pink to like blue, um, that's a good indicator that, that something happened, there's a chemical change there. Also another one is a release of energy, that can be in the form of like light or heat, um, any of those things like when you burn something, that is uh, a good idea of that a chemical reaction took place. Um, so if you release some sort of energy, it doesn't matter if it's thermal, doesn't matter if it's um, you know, kinetic, one of those things, and any type of energy that you're going to release uh, is definitely a good indicator. Also the formation of precipitate, now it's probably something you probably haven't heard. Um, pre pre precipitate is when you have two liquids and you put them together and you get like a solid, -y, a solid material that comes out of it. So it can, it can look like a little flakes of a solid. That's a precipitate. You might have a, do a lab in class where you form precipitates. Um, it's actually just making, it might look like just a color change, but they're actually like a solid within an aqueous solution or a, a water solution. Um, so in order to indicate that a chemical reaction took place, uh, you're going to write it something that looks similar to this. this. is obviously the simplistic form you're going to have. You're going to have on your uh, beginning things that you're going to have are called the reactants. These are guys that are going to react together. Um, and then we're going to say, the arrow, which indicates, okay, they're going to go from the reactants to something else. They're going to change form. Um, and to actually say that out loud, you're going to use the word yields. Like reactants yields products. That's a new chemistry term for you. And then the products are the, at the end uh, molecules you're going to end up with. All right, so let's do some together. Okay, so over here we have a written reaction. Rxn is my little shorthand for a reaction. Um, so we have solid zinc. Um, so how do we write that out? We're going to say, just write the element zinc. And I have to indicate that it is a solid, because that's important. So next to it, I'm going to put in parentheses an S to indicate that's a solid, the state of matter. And aqueous um, hydrogen sulfate. So because I'm putting them together, I'm going to put a little addition sign that shows that these two are coming together. Um, aqueous, that's important. We'll get to that in just a second. Hydrogen sulfate. OK, so sulfate we know is SO4 minus 2. Hydrogen is hydrogen plus. We're going to do our swapping. This is a plus 1. So it's going to be H2SO4. We need two hydrogens and one sulfate. We have to make sure that we show that it's aqueous, meaning that it's in solution. So it's in a water solution. So we're going to put a little AQ to say it's a solution of this material. Reacts. And in order to say these things are going to react, I'm going to put my arrow, or AKA yields, um, to produce something new, hydrogen gas. And don't forget, hydrogen is one of our diatomics. Um, don't forget our diatomics as Brinkelhoff. I don't know if you heard of Brinkelhoff, but bromine cannot stand alone. Um, chlorine cannot stand alone. Bre oh, sorry, iodine cannot stand alone. Hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These elements, you'll never see them by themselves, ever, ever, ever. So whenever you see hydrogen gas, for example, you're going to have, it's going to be H2. Okay, and it's a gas, so we're going to indicate that by lowercase g. And aqueous zinc sulfate, zinc's a plus 2, sulfate's a minus 2, so we're going to say zinc sulfate. Okay, and this is aqueous, we have to indicate that as well, meaning that it's in a, in a solution. So we're going to put the little aq. So we have to make sure we put our states of matter. Um, solid is S, liquid is a L, obviously, G, gas is a G, and if it's in solution, I know these are the four states of matter that we're used to, we have to make sure we have, if it's in solution, it's called aqueous, and we're going to say AQ. So um, this we're going to call a skeletal equation. We have to go further on to balance this, and we're not quite finished with it yet, but this is how you go from, so, to make a written solution, in, sorry, a written reaction into an actual skeletal equation.